I discovered Ian Reid's work through a film, actually, the adaptation of his novel, I'm Thinking of Ending Things. And I liked the movie overall. It had a, a quirky nature to it. There was a mystery uh, underlying the entire thing. And of course, there was a reveal at the very end. And this piqued my interest enough to check out the novel itself. The novel was something else entirely. It, it had a massive impact on me. I, I would have to say this book is definitely in my top 10 favorite novels of all time, at least at the time of this recording. So why did it take me so long to read this book? I have no idea. And ironically enough, Foe, the book I'm talking about today, has been adapted into a film. The trailer is out. I just saw it yesterday. I think it comes out on October 6th. So hopefully this review finds you well. If you are considering reading the novel before watching the movie, or maybe you saw the movie and you're considering reading the novel. Before I begin, I will let you know that there's going to be a spoiler section at the very end of this video. So if you've read the book or seen the movie, then hang out until the end and let's talk about all the cool spoilery stuff. Well, what is the hook? What is Foe about? Junior and Henrietta live in a remote area on a farm in relative peace until one night a mysterious stranger shows up who informs them that Junior has won a lottery to travel to a space station. And as the days drag on, the mystery of why Junior was chosen works under his skin, prodding at his psyche and exacerbating his marital turmoil until he discovers the true nature of his mission. So what did I think? Well, before we begin with character, I think it's important to talk about Ian Reid's fascination with relationships. He grew up on a small farm in Ontario, so he appreciates isolation, but he also does see the power of relationships. And in fact, I'm thinking of ending things centered around the relationship between two people. Foe is no different. However, even though the relationship story is a huge part of this novel, it's not the centerpiece, even though ironically, I would argue that is the entire foundation of the story and where the theme comes from. In this book, we have a beautiful triangle of characters. We have Junior, we have Henrietta, and we have Terrence. And I'm sure you've heard of love triangles before. They work for a reason, because when you have an even number of characters, you can have sides, you can have equal sides. With a triangle, you have this persistent tug of war between these three characters, and that is exactly what we have here. Let us talk about these beautiful points on this triangle of conflict. Let's begin with Junior. He is our protagonist. He is the man we experience the story through in first person, present tense. He's kind of a people pleaser in a way, but he's absolutely satisfied with his isolated life out on this farm. But Henrietta, Hen as he calls her, his wife, is not so happy. She would love nothing more than to move to the city, have these great colorful experiences to help her grow as a person. Before Terrence even shows up, before the mystery arises, we already have a baseline level of conflict, this simmering level of conflict that is persistent throughout the narrative. So Terrence, he shows up, he's kind of part salesman, part friend. He's an extremely friendly, nice guy. He doesn't feel pushy whatsoever. He speaks to Henrietta and Junior as if he's known them for many years. He says he's from the government and he informs Junior that he's been selected from a lottery to travel up to this space station, this new space station, to perform very important work for the period of two years. Not surprisingly, Junior and Henrietta are taken aback. They're wondering where did this lottery come from why Junior, of all people, a guy who works at a grain packing plant, would be chosen to go up to this space station and do whatever it is the hell that they want him to do. And so this simmering tension that Ian Reed creates with the marital problems between Junior and Henrietta starts to rise, right? It's compounded by the tension and the mystery that Terrence brings, which creates a beautiful triangle of conflict, as I mentioned. And so the character work in here is, is fantastic. You get deep in the psyche of Junior, but you also definitely feel Henrietta. And you're always questioning Terrence and his motivation. Is this all an illusion? Is this some kind of ruse? Because while this story takes place in the near future, the science fiction elements are never thrown at you. There's no jargon, there's no flying spaceships that are passing over this canola field. It feels very much like a normal story about two or three people in a farmhouse, in a remote location, not tied to any kind of science fiction setting. Another theme that came to mind was governmental control because Terrence says he is sent by the government and this mission is not voluntary whatsoever, but he presents it in such an appealing way. Maybe appealing is the wrong word, but he is so friendly. He is so unabrasive that Junior 
kind of accepts his fate. It's a weird psychological game he's playing with Junior. And it got me thinking that, you know, when government comes to us and, and mandates certain things or puts certain legislation in place for our betterment in which we are forced to adhere to, we just kind of often passively accept it, just like Junior did here. So I'm not sure if Ian Reid was trying to make a commentary on that kind of thing, but it definitely stood out to me. And it's something that was not a mistake because Junior definitely pushes back. He asks a lot of questions. He feels like he's trapped. So it was a familiar scenario when you see a populace at large kind of just giving in to the government because again, they assume that they know what is best for us. Let us talk about plot next. And this plot is extremely simple. Henrietta and Junior live alone on this farm until Terrence shows up to give them this news. But what is Henrietta going to do if she's all alone while Junior is away on the space station for two years? Well, Terrence has an answer for that. And this is not a spoiler because it is in the book description. But Terrence informs them that they're going to create a copy of Junior, indistinguishable from the real thing. So Terrence, while his visits start out as, as friendly and just being a bunch of conversations and, and, and reassuring Junior that everything's going to be okay, turns into something else when he starts bringing in equipment, scanning Junior, but telling him that they need all of this data to create the perfect clone. And again, Junior just kind of accepts this again, right? Because the government knows what's best. He has nothing to fear. Everything is going to be taken care of. And this starts to ratchet up the tension more. Not only does it have Junior question what is going on, but it starts to bring even more turmoil to his relationship with Henrietta. As great as this setup is, as great as the tension is, the one negative thing I'm gonna have to say about this book is I did feel like it flatlined a little bit toward the middle. The tension does gradually rise even though this is a short book even though the writing is extremely simple and you could breeze through this I did feel like some of the tension was lost just before the reveal and yes there is a reveal but the reveal is unique not in its execution because we've all seen this reveal before but it's the aftermath of that revelation of that reveal where the novel truly shines and this reveal comes at about the 80 percent mark in this book so there's a good 20 percent of the aftermath so you can tell ian reed probably didn't think this was incredibly clever it was just a means to have him explore the theme of this book explore the theme of relationships explore how people change and how somebody could be incredibly happy where they are where the other person is not and where those differences lead them. And so you may say that Ian Reid is kind of an M. Night Shyamalan, right? Where he is known for his twist. He is known for his reveal. But Shyamalan's twists don't have the emotional weight. They do not have the thematic weight that Ian Reid's do. Shyamalan's feel like more of a reveal for the audience, something to make them gasp, something to look back at all the breadcrumbs that they missed and maybe rewatch the movie all over again through different eyes. Ian Reid uses his reveals, his twists to enhance the themes, to bring out the themes of the story, which make them so much more powerful. And don't worry, he does lay all the breadcrumbs perfectly. This does not feel like a rug was tugged out from under you when the reveal happens. And while some of you may feel disappointed when it gets to that point, please stick with the book because that again is where the story really shines. All right, let us talk about the writing itself or as I like to call it, the cinematography of the novel. This is written in first person point of view in present tense. So I'm sure you can gather that we get a very intimate portrait of Junior's mind, but also how he relates to the other characters and how they relate to him. Even though this is a very tight POV, we get beautiful portraits written in very, very simple prose. Junior, Henrietta, and Terrence to a degree, even though again, feels like he's wearing a mask much of the time. I think it's also important to talk about how the writing should serve the story. So I've read his other novel and the writing is very different in that one than it is here. It's far more verbose. It's far simpler here in faux. And that's something that I think a lot of people don't appreciate or a lot of writers don't take advantage of is that they tend to fall into their own voice, regardless of genre, regardless of POV. But Ian Reid is a better writer than that. He knows he needs to write to serve the story, not to maintain some voice that he's developed over the years. And the simplicity of the writing is perfect for the setting. It's perfect for Junior. It's perfect for the reader's experience. And it's something that I honestly don't see very often in books written by the same writer. So while simple on the surface, it has so much depth, so much purpose, fantastic writing. And I think I'll just leave it at that, which is why I'm going to give Ian Reid's foe an eight out of 10. 
A simple story with a small cast of characters with so much depth and a plot that is deliberately paced with a searing tension that will bring you all the way into the end until the dramatic reveal. But a reveal that is far more than just for the reader's surprise because it reveals the theme itself and a theme we can all relate to, a story that will stick with you for a very long time so go read this book. It's fantastic. Like I said, the only downside for me is it felt like a little bit too long. It felt like the tension definitely dipped a little bit down toward the midpoint, but that is a small, small gripe. I, I highly encourage you to check this book out. That is it for the review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know with a like and let me know, did you read the book? Did you enjoy it? Are there things I missed? But if you did read the book, stick around. I'm going to talk about spoilers very shortly. But for the rest of you out there, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. All right, spoiler talk, everybody. My question to you is, did you guess the twist? Did um, you figure it out before Ian Reed presented it to you? The funny thing is, I kind of did, sort of. I, I got the idea, of, it's, it's kind of funny, rather than thinking about the story I was reading, the story inspired a story in my mind because I write stories and so I'm constantly trying to collect these bits of information and, and hopefully assemble them into something. But it brought to mind the idea of, of an AI, right? Who is, who is sent somewhere to be a companion for somebody. But there's a ticking clock. They, they're only going to exist for maybe a year. And then what are the implications of that relationship? And while that's similar to the story in a way, it's, it's only the surface level stuff. The beauty of this novel is how Ian Reid gave you everything. Terrence was giving you all of the information you needed. Granted, it was the inverse of what he was saying, but it was all true. There was a copy. However, Junior, the man we experienced or, or the robot we experienced a story through was that copy. And so that's such an interesting thing to think that everything was really all already out there in the open. Because with mysteries, we're always, always trying to figure out what is the writer not telling me? What do I need to come to my own conclusions with? Whereas everything was out center stage. Granted, we didn't know that Junior was the copy and he wasn't the real Junior who was being scanned to create a copy, but still it was all out there. Now the names Junior and Henrietta, because he's calling her Hen, I think said a lot about the characters and a lot about the themes of the story. Junior was wearing what he was in his name, right? Even though the real Junior was named Junior, he was the copy of Junior. He was the son of Junior. He was the Junior of Junior. And then Hen, I think that's obvious, is that Hen was kind of the, the mother Hen, forced to stay at home while her husband was off doing some kind of work on a space station, even though she wanted nothing more than to go out and experience the world, go live in a city, go see beautiful things. And that's the greatest thing about this book is it's so relatable. You know, we're all in, we've all been in relationships or are in relationships. And so we can completely relate to, to the struggle here, the, the turmoil between these two people that want different things. One who doesn't understand how the other one can't want what they want and vice versa. And so they're at a standstill. The entire plot is just kind of upended when Terrence shows up. Also, if you think about soldiers who go away to war, and they leave their wives at home and they're both living very different lives and the wife is kind of expected to just hold down the fort essentially until the husband comes home or, or doesn't come home. So I got I got definite vibes in that regard too. The ultimate beauty of this book is after the reveal is the last 20% when Henrietta gets to switch. She gets to go experience life, experience all of these beautiful things she's wanted to rather than being cooped up on this farm. But Junior doesn't notice it. He doesn't notice it because Henrietta, again, is a perfect copy. And in fact, he has the woman that he's always wanted. A woman who is completely happy, staying at home with him with a simple life. I should probably talk about the Beatles because after I read the book, I went and read it just searching if, if there was anybody who found more information or, or more depth to the novel that I didn't pick up. And there was a lot of Beatle talk there. And the funny thing was is that Everyone is looking for something else in books. So while this book is so heavy in theme, while it's not at all about space stations or science fiction or anything like that, people thought that these beetles were literal bugs, like microphones or cameras that were there to spy on him and Junior. And I just laughed because I'm like, you guys are completely missing the point of this novel. And it really illuminated how People just read things differently. And that to me was a very surface reading of this book. Because the Beatles to me just were there to show the true nature of the real Junior versus the copy. Because when, when the copy of Junior finds the Beatles, he leaves them alone. When Junior comes home and he finds the Beatle, he crushes it. It's all in the subtext there, everybody. I'm not sure why, you, why you're thinking that 
these these bugs are literal bugs microphones and cameras but anyway it gave me a good laugh i'm not saying that that's not a possibility of course it could be but i think the true meaning is is, is so much deeper than that and, and Ian Reid is a very mature writer. He's a writer who does not write on the surface. Everything about what he does is, is beneath the surface. And that is why I enjoy his writing so much. Another little clue uh, to what was going on was the, the dialogue. Anytime Junior spoke, there was no quotation marks. And then that was our clue to know at the very end that Henrietta was not the real Henrietta any longer because her dialogue was missing quotation marks at that point. This is something that I noticed in Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk, which is, was an indicator as to what kind of was really going on. The narrator was the only one who did not have quotation marks around their dialogue, but you could argue that because the narrator is telling the story in first person, that that is why they were omitted, right? Because it's them thinking about what they said, not recounting what they said, essentially, like they would be with another character. But so many breadcrumbs, so many clues, uh, a masterfully written novel. Again, the only thing that kind of detracted from it was the, the pacing toward the middle. Um, I expected this thing to just completely rise and rise and rise and rise until the buildup and the reveal, but it did feel like it, it ran a little bit too long. But let me know what you thought in the comments below. Hopefully I covered enough spoilery stuff for you. Hopefully you enjoyed this novel as much as I did. Hopefully you are eager to see the film as much as I am. But remember, if you wanna comment with any spoilery stuff down below, Please mark it with a spoiler tag so you do not spoil it for anybody else. Thanks for hanging out with me this long. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.